Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Yes, Praise Lord. God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your name tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you all. God bless you. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Suzanne and Peter. Thank you, Tim, for opening. Appreciate you all very much. Praise God. Thank the Lord. Amen. Well, it's Wednesday night, so I always say this, and I, I'm usually, usually keep my word. But Amen. We're going to be brief. Praise the Lord. So you all get home before dark. <laughs> well, maybe not before dark, but before it gets too late. Amen. So you all have to get up early in the morning. Praise God. Amen. God is good. Amen. He's on the throne no matter what it looks like around us. Praise the Lord. He's still, he's still got it all together. Praise the Lord. Amen. And uh, I won't uh, belabor the point, but I will just say that uh, by the next couple of services, we may re, uh, revisit some things. Just, uh, you know, I, I believe we're in a kind of a transition, and obviously uh, issues happen all the time, and as human beings and living in the world, we're subject to the to the tribulations and the trials that come. But we have one who is greater, Amen, than all the trials and all the tribulations. And uh, really, uh, what Jesus wants is for us to uh, to identify with Him and not with the problems, not with the issues, not with the negatives, but with Him. Praise the Lord. And uh, I think that's uh, this is an opportunity I've noticed over the years and. Uh, Things happen, and uh, God is not the author of them for sure, but He certainly is with us to get us through those things. And many times, the challenge is for us to rise up and be the Christian, amen, that we claim to be when everything is just going normal. You know what I'm saying? Praise the Lord. Sometimes we get slapped right in the face with, uh, with the enemy and with challenges that uh, I think God is just saying, who are you going to be today? Praise the Lord. And not, not that he's being critical or mean, just simply, are we who we claim to be? Amen. And this is an opportunity for us to be that very thing. Amen. To put the word, amen, where our mouth is. Praise the Lord. To make it the reality in spite of whatever else may be going on. Amen. Uh, in our lives. Praise the Lord. So, uh, Peter's back there working wonders. Amen. As always. Hallelujah. So it's a wonder, he said. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Romans 3 and verse 23, please. Praise the Lord. We'll start with Romans 3 and verse 23. God bless all of you for being here tonight. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. Hebrews chapter... Chapter 12 and verse 15. Hebrews 12 and 15. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank God for grace. Without it, none of us would be here. Praise the Lord. And... Uh, we would still be struggling, amen, with, uh, with things that we can't overcome, praise God. Rules, regulations, demands for perfection that none of us are able to meet, praise God. And when we miss grace, the scripture says a bitter root begins to grow. In the Hebrew culture, uh, any poisonous plant would be called a bitter plant or a bitter root. So here... Bitter root is a metaphor to make it clear that when we miss grace, things become toxic. Praise the Lord. Religion without grace is poisonous. Praise the Lord. Religion itself is not bad. I mean, come on. But religion without grace is poisonous. A church without grace is poisonous. A heart without grace is poisonous. Tim was talking about it all during the preliminaries. It's reaching out. It's loving people that are struggling, that are, 
that are going through things whose lives may not reflect Christianity, who may not look like the thing we want them to look like, or may not act like the, the person we want them to act like. That's where the body of Christ has to step up, amen, and extend grace. It's what Jesus did throughout His ministry, and that's what we have to do, because without it, amen, we are poison. Praise the Lord. A heart without grace is deadly. You all have met people, amen, with a, just a mean streak in them, you know, a mean heart, just, you know, just looking for an opportunity to get you, praise the Lord. When we miss grace, the poison of bitterness and anger will eventually be too much to be hidden, and it will eventually destroy. Praise the Lord. You've all probably known people over the years that well, they, they go out to minister to somebody and all they want to do is just beat them up. All they want to do is just tell them how horrible they are, what a terrible person you are, and you know, you're just a mess, and you're going to split hell wide open, and all that. Even though that may be true, that isn't the way we reach out to them. That isn't, certainly isn't the way that Jesus reached out to people. Amen? Let's look at Romans 3.23 again, Peter. <clears throat> all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned and come short. So who does all include? Well, all includes you. All includes me. Amen? Now the question is, how do we respond to that information? Well, yeah, I mean, uh, technically I've sinned. But I haven't sin sinned. I mean, I'm not that bad. Right? We dismiss our sin. And our need for grace. We're saved. Amen. We are bought with a price. We have been sealed by the Holy Ghost. We're going to heaven. But don't kid yourself that you don't still come short. Amen. We dismiss our sin and, and our need for grace by comparing ourselves to others. And believe me, you don't have to look far to find somebody that's a bigger jerk. Or, I don't mean to say it that way, that's worse than you. But on the other hand, you don't have to look a whole lot further to find somebody who's probably acting a little better than you on any given moment. Amen? You know what you do when you are comparing yourselves with somebody else? You're sinning. <laughs> Ouch. Praise the Lord. 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 12, please. We dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. Luke 7, 47. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven... The same loveth little. See, our, our love for God is paralleled with the degree of forgiveness that we've received. Right? I mean, if you realize what God did for you, your love is commensurate. Amen? And that's why a lot of times a person first gets saved, they're all excited and it's great. But the longer you live for God, the more grateful, the more you begin to truly understand what your love for God is based on what He's done for us. What He's done every single day, not just at the moment of conversion, but as we said earlier, all of our lives. And your love then grows as a result of that. And it parallels the forgiveness that we have received. So, okay, I'm a sinner. In fact, maybe I'm a big sinner, but I'm not the biggest sinner. See what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is humanity. This is humans. This is what we fit. This is how we operate. 1 Timothy 1.15.
This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. This is Paul talking. He didn't say of, of whom I was. He didn't say I was the worst sinner. He said I am the worst sinner. I am the biggest sinner. Praise the Lord. The more I learn about the righteousness of God, the more I examine my own life and motives. And I, you know, there's a part of me that wants to qualify this by saying, well, wait a minute, I didn't do this, and I haven't done that, and don't get, you know, don't start thinking too big here. Don't, don't, don't start imagining what a horrible thing I am. But I'm telling you, the more I realize how righteous and how holy and how good God is, the more I examine my own life and the motives, the closer I'm getting to the inescapable conclusion that I am the worst sinner I know. Because I know me better than I know you. That's what Paul is saying. The more I come to know God, the more I, the deeper I come to realize what God has done for me and who God is and what God is, I see myself as the worst sinner there is. Romans 3.23 again. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6, 23. When we look at other people, when we, when we see the, the things that happen in their lives and the, the failures and the coming short and the awful stuff that can happen in a person's life, we've got to remember this. Everybody comes short. Well, you, well I'm, I didn't come that short. Well, that's not what Paul said. He said, I am the chiefest. Now, there was a lot of bad actors, you know, in the time that Paul lived. But he's not measuring himself with them. He's saying, I'm the worst. Because the more I look at myself and the more I look at God, the more I realize there is a great gap here between His holiness, His righteousness, His purity, His love, His goodness, and me. Now, doesn't, I'm not saying we're not saved by grace. I'm not saying that God doesn't deal with us based on Jesus. I'm talking about just our identity, our, our own awareness. Amen? Because without this, we can't minister. I'm telling you the truth. Without this, you cannot really meet people where they are. There will always be a sense of, well, praise the Lord, you got a problem here. And, and I, we all got problems, but man, I don't have that problem. But all have sinned and come short. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The penalty for our sin is death. We can minimize what we've done. We can exaggerate what others have done. But the Bible says we have been declared guilty. It's the Lord. All have sinned and the wages of sin is death. Y'all are part of the all. The sentence is death. Romans 5.12. I'm not picking on you now. I'm just, we want to minister. And we want to minister life. And you do that by grace. Jesus was perfect. But he never held himself in a way that humiliated the people that he was trying to minister to. He never said, look at me. Always pointed him to God and to the love that God had for them. And his mercy, as we talked about. Doesn't I praise the Lord. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Praise the Lord. Everybody's sinned. The diagnosis we are with sin. And our condition is terminal. The antidote, verse 15 through 18. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. 
And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. So the equation, on the one side of the equation is your, your sin. And your sin is worse than you can imagine. That's a, I know that may be a wake up to some people, but praise the Lord. Amen. According to him, it's, it's death. It's, it's worth dying for. So you've got your sin. Your sin's worse than you can think or imagine it to be. You can minimize it. You can rationalize it. You can measure it amongst others. You can minimize it. try to dismiss it but you are terminally ill praise the Lord it's uplifting isn't it y'all getting excited want to shout hmm. run the aisle Amen. praise the Lord on the other side of the equation is God's grace not you getting better although we want to be better it's not about that it's about God's grace extended to everyone to the same all that comes short. When Jesus died on the cross, His blood was not infected with sin. Jesus became the antidote that cures us and is the cure for everyone who comes short of the glory of God. After putting your sin on one side and God's grace on the other side, we find that God's grace is sufficient to heal us of our terminal disease. And it can do it for anybody. In fact, it can do it for everybody, for whosoever will. Amen? We don't take credit for this, which is the same reason why we shouldn't judge others. Be merciful, because we have received mercy. Amen? Romans 5.15 Romans 5.15. I messed you up and made you have to go backwards, I know. But, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. Amen? Nobody, no body has done anything anything so horrible that grace can't cover it. That's hard to take. That's hard to swallow sometimes when especially when it gets personal. But that is the truth. That is the fact of the gospel. That is the truth of God's word. Nobody's done anything so horrible that grace can't cover it. Grace is always greater no matter what. I'm not saying the bad isn't bad. I'm just saying grace is greater. If it weren't, we are wasting our time here tonight. Praise the Lord. Paul's explanation in Romans 5 about the greatness of God's grace is really helpful to me. But an explanation of grace without experiencing grace is like being terminally ill and the doctor gives you a life-saving uh, medication and you refuse to take it. Our job is to dispense the medicine and do everything we can to get that terminally ill patient to take it. Not to judge why they got the disease. Are you with me? You understand what I'm saying? Not to, not to critique the reason why they're so ill. Because we all had the same disease. We just got the medication. We just took the medicine. Amen? And our job now, because we have received grace, is to give grace. Is to share that grace. Whether they take it or not, that's their decision. Our job is not to, uh, to 
to judge, but to give the medication. Whether they take it or not, that's between them and God. But it doesn't alleviate us from the responsibility of giving the medication. We still have to extend the grace because it was given to us. The greatness of God's grace means I don't have to keep trying to convince myself I'm not that bad. The truth is, I'm worse than I ever wanted to admit. But God's grace is greater than I could have ever imagined. And that's true for every living human being. And that's the call that we have. That's simple Christianity 101. Praise the Lord. It's great for God to, to reveal greater truths, deeper truths, but the truth is, without this truth, the rest of it is meaningless. Because we all struggle with who we are. But God has said, I'm greater than all your problems, greater than all your failures, greater than all your shortcomings. I'm God, and I love you. Here's the antidote for your sickness, for your disease. Take it and then share it with somebody else. Amen? That's our message for tonight. God bless you. Give the Lord a hand clap. Praise God. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Worse than I want to be, worse than I want to admit that I am, but His grace is still greater than I can ever repay. Praise the Lord. It's true for every one of us. That's the good news. That's the thing that helps me go to sleep at night and wake up with a smile on my face in the morning. Praise the Lord. And I'll do the same for you, and it will do the same for others that are struggling with this terminal illness, unaware that there is a cure. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Uh, Lord, just be with Tim and Leah as they travel over the weekend. Uh, bless their visit down there. Just give them a joyous time with you. And uh, as they uh, celebrate the... Uh, Granddaughter, uh, amen. Identifying with your death, burial, and resurrection. Amen. What a great time in the Lord. Amen. God bless you all. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.